today we got lots of stuff. I have my handy dandy breast cancer notebook. It is not pretty, neither is breast cancer. It's got all my goodies. It's got all of my tests, all of my paperwork. It's got things I don't even wanna look at ever again. That's why I've contained it to this book. But it also has stuff that I've received from physical therapy in regards to lymphedema. And that is what we are talking about today. We are talking about lymphedema from a breast cancer survivor's perspective, things I have learned, what it's like, because I do have lymphedema, and also um, things we could do. So let's just get right into it. Hi guys, I am Lauren Kramer. I am a breast cancer while pregnant survivor. I'm a registered nurse and a mom of two, and I am here to give back. I am here to share my story. I'm here to share tips, tricks, anything that I've learned along the way that I think could benefit you if you're along a similar journey. And just kind of just the realness of life after going through something like breast cancer, because while a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that it changes a lot, it does change a lot. And it doesn't have to be a negative thing, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to kind of share the, the realness and rawness of that. So if that sounds like it's something for you, please like this video, please subscribe, share with somebody that you think could benefit from it. I am here today to talk to you about lymphedema, what it is, what we can do about it, and some awesome tips that really help us prevent us getting it and to just take away the scary factor. While lymphedema is a real thing, it is something that I think that when we first hear about it, we get severely overwhelmed. It's like a, just another thing that we have to worry about. I'm here to shed light on it. And I do wanna put a disclaimer here. Everything that I'm talking about here is all based on my opinion and things I've experienced. It is not medical advice. Everything that I talk about, I either experienced myself or I learned from my amazing physical therapist. All right. I'm a breast cancer cheerleader. I want to make you feel awesome. And part of this reason for this video is because I wanna make you feel like you can do this. You're missing some lymph nodes. I got you. We can talk about it. We can make it feel a little bit lighter because everything regarding cancer feels a little bit heavy. So let's learn about it. What is lymphedema? Lymphedema is the swelling in an arm or leg caused by lymphatic system blockages. This condition is caused by a blockage in the lymphatic system, part of the immune and circulatory systems. Lymphedema is most commonly caused by lymph node removal or damage due to cancer treatment. It's pretty simple. Lymphatic fluid is a little bit more viscous or thicker, so it takes a little bit more effort to move around. And when we are missing lymph nodes or we have damage to that system, it's going to cause swelling. So a lot of breast cancer patients, they have to sometimes get lymph nodes removed, whether it's for the biopsy came back positive for cancer and they take the lymph nodes out to make sure that there is no, that all the cancer was removed. Uh, for instance, my experience is that when I was getting my mastectomy, I had a sentinel node biopsy where they test a few, they took out a few lymph nodes while I was getting operated on. They did test, uh, they did tests on these lymph nodes while I was under and they found some cancer. So because of that, they took in total 21 lymph nodes. So that immediately put me at risk for lymphedema. Now, there could also be damage to the system because when you're having a mastectomy or radiation, things like that could damage your lymphatic system. So you're a little bit more at risk for lymphedema, especially if you also have lymph nodes removed. And I think I'm going to say this in a lot of my videos, but I think ultimately prevention is key. So if you take away anything from this video, just take away that let's do things now so we don't have to worry as much about them later. And that goes really a lot for a lot. We want to prevent things from getting worse instead of waiting till it happens and then trying to get back to the state we want to be in. And it sounds easier said than done, but I think it's just important to cancer survivors when they're trying to lead a normal life and um, just not have to worry about something additionally. Let's get to my PT section of the book here. Ooh, here we go. Good information. Guys, I have so much information about this. I don't even know if I have time in this video to go over. So what are some signs that could be signs that we're experiencing lymphedema? And now I know this one's really tricky because I, I had no idea and 
there's so many things that are new with our body that we don't even know what's what. For me personally, I immediately addressed a symptom that I experienced when I was going through radiation. And so when I started radiation, I immediately started feeling uh, a tightness in my arm. And now cording is a big thing when you have mastectomies as well as axillary node dissections, which where that's when you take out the lymph nodes. So I think what I originally was starting to feel was that cording. So it just feels like a tight, almost like a cord that kind of runs, whether it's from your chest all the way through your arm and down or even smaller parts. Um, but I think that's what I was initially experiencing, but that made me go to physical therapy. And that is where I've learned so much about lymphedema, about cording and ways to just combat. So, that is what I initially experienced. Over time, I've learned that some signs of lymphedema could be that you feel heaviness, you actually see swelling and there's some pitting in your limb, which means that when you press on it, it's not just, it doesn't bounce right back. It takes a couple seconds to actually recover to the surface. Um, if you have any, like I said, heaviness, or if there's any pain that you're that's going on that feels that you're not sure where it come from, comes from, honestly, I would say it doesn't hurt to get it checked. Clear signs of swelling, that is a good indicator. Heaviness of the limb is a really good indicator as well. Numbness and tingling actually can be a sign of this from what I've learned. A lot of people who went through chemotherapy and or radiation can experience numbness and tingling from side effects of radiation as, or side effects from chemo and radiation as well. So it can be a little confusing but again, if we are aware that this is a possibility for us, these are things that we could advocate for ourselves. I'm gonna go over some things that I do to maintain healthy drainage of my affected arm, uh, my affected limb, and also things that help prevent and also treat lymphedema. So the first one is, as you're going to hear a lot, is lymphatic massage. And honestly, it sounds simple, but it can be overwhelming because it's not just a regular massage. There's a lot of actually quality information on the internet in regards to lymphatic massage. So just look it up, go talk to your PT first, look it up. There's a lot of YouTube videos. Here's one of them. <laughs> one of the issues with lymphatic massage is even if you know how to do it, it's actually taking the time to do it. I think that goes with anything. That is just another thing we have to worry about. So one of my tips in regards to lymphatic massage is, and we'll get to how to do that in a second, is habit stacking. So for me, I do my lymphatic massage in the shower because most of the time I'm not going to schedule five to 10 minutes to do my lymphatic massage during the day. I normally wouldn't even think about it because my mom brain <laughs> is real right now. It also could be post chemo brain, who knows? My brain sucks, <laughs> but I like to do it in the shower. This has helped me get my lymphatic massages in. Lymphatic massage is specific because, you, for instance, my left arm is affected, right? So I don't want to massage downward because we're only creating more swelling at the bottom of the limb. You want it to go toward, you want to massage towards your heart. That is the goal. Um, that is the direction you want to go when you're doing your lymphatic massages. And something that my physical therapist told me that was really helpful in imagining how to massage is like a jellyfish. So you know when a jellyfish is, if you picture a jellyfish, you don't picture it just sitting there, you picture its tentacles kind of floating like this as it's going, propelling itself. So that's kind of the motion and the technique you wanna use as you are massaging. And you don't wanna do a heavy pressure because your lymphatic system is very superficial. So you wanna do a very light pressure, a gentle pressure, and you wanna be smooth as you're massaging up all the way through your heart. And you wanna do this very gently. Start from the top and kind of release whatever is happening, whatever lymphatic fluid is up here, and then restart at the bottom. Basically, you wanna prevent any clogging. So if it's, if it's already swelling, you kinda of wanna be able to release what is going on up here toward the heart and work your way down and still work back to the heart. Number two is something you're going to hear a lot. It is compression. Compression is important because it helps reduce the swelling. It is important to wear it specific times, not just all the time. You do not have to do that. You can wear it if you feel 
you are going to be doing something that might exacerbate it for you because over time you might learn your own symptoms, but it is not something you have to wear 24 seven unless indicated otherwise. For me, I like to wear it very minimally. What my physical therapist told me, which I t it was a huge takeaway for me, is that you're doing something where you feel like you're going to kind of ignite a little bit of inflammation. It's not necessarily as important to wear it during that time frame, but but after, because that's typically when the swelling will happen. For an example, I train jujitsu and I had asked my physical therapist, I don't really like wearing the sleeve when I'm training because it gets in the way. Her response was, wear it after. If you've noticed that you've had excessive use of the limb that you are at risk for, that might be a time to slap on the compression sleeve and wear it for a little while. If you're doing a lot around the house and you feel like it's okay to wear it, put it on while you do these things. When you're working out, I know a lot of people wear it when you're working out, but like I said, that you could always pop it on after just to kind of prevent any extra swelling. Extreme temperatures are also something that can ignite swelling. Um, for some people, it could be a trigger for your lymphedema. So it could be something that you might want to wear when you are um, in very hot or very cold temperatures. Number three is probably one of the most important ones because, <laughs> and very hard to do, because um, preventing injury and infection. So I can't tell you how many times I've nicked, sliced, got a paper cut, had some kind of small little injury to this arm, but I've noticed it so much more now that I'm aware of my arm. I wanna be aware of things that can cause infection because your limb is going to have a harder time moving the fluid. Number four, number four is a little bit obvious. Something you'll hear often is don't carry um, heavy bags on that arm or do anything that's restrictive. So you also wanna think about that when it comes to your clothing, because if you're wearing bras or sports bras or anything that has any tight seams, you wanna be careful that it is, and that's specific to the arm is for breast cancer, um, but for any affected limb, you wanna be careful you're not restricting a, sp a specific area. Not necessarily the whole thing, that's what compression does. But if you have a bra that's kind of cutting in here, you might experience some swelling from that. And if it's your arm, you could experience some swelling in your arm, but also in your trunk area. Number five is dry brushing. It does feel really good. I have a, I have a dry brush myself. Just a small tip in regards to dry brushing, if that's something that you want to do. You don't want to put heavy pressure. Just like I said with the, uh, the massage, you want to, it's just very superficial. So you want to do light brushing. Let's go back to the shower. You could dry brush right before you get in the shower. And then while you're in the shower, you could also do some lymph lymphatic massages or switch it up. Maybe do some dry brushing one day and do some massage the next day. Just try to fit it into your routine the best you can. It's important to find ways that are good for you that will work into your lifestyle so you actually do it. I think that's the most important part is actually taking action. Okay, number six is something I didn't really want to talk about, but I also think it's beneficial. I didn't want to talk about it because it's kind of like dry brushing in the sense of there's not a ton of information out there or data out there that's like, this is it, this is what you should do. But if you think about the mechanism and if you think about, oh my God, I didn't even say the most important one. That'll be number seven. Number six is rebounding. And I also want to say jumping on a trampoline because if you're a mom like me, you might have a trampoline, get on there with your kids, bounce with your kids, bounce by yourself, whatever you gotta do. If you if you have a small little trampoline that's in your house, they're just called rebounders, I think. I don't have one of those, I don't know. Um, but that is something that a lot of women do to try to help move the lymphatic fluid because of the way you're bouncing. Um, and that brings me to number seven, what I was talking about is exercise and movement. Movement is so important because for everything, let's just be real here, <laughs> but it is important for lymphedema because we need to move in order for our lymphatic system to move efficiently. And for people who don't have lymph nodes and ha are at risk for lymphedema, we, ha we need extra support. So we need extra movement. We need to do all these things to have extra support to make sure our body is functioning at its best and able to support our lymphatic system and help move the lymphatic fluid out in a way and not let it stay stagnant and gross. Do not get your blood pressure or blood drawn on the, uh, the affected limb. 
but I'm sure this isn't going to be the last video I have on lymphedema. I've made video before kind of talking about my own personal experience being diagnosed. Um, so I'll add that in the video here if you are interested in it. If you are still watching, please comment below breasty and let me know that we are in this together and that you appreciate this video and want more <laughs> because I really want to give back and I want to know if this is the kind of video you like. I try to change it up here. I like to do educational informative videos kind of like this one where I educate but also share my experience and then also videos kind of vlogging just about my own personal experience as a breast cancer survivor, as a mom, as a human that goes through stuff in their health and so just let me know i want to know what you like and i want to know what you want to see more of that being said i really hope you enjoyed this video and benefit from it if you know someone that could benefit from it please share with them and other than that i will see you in the next one